Why should you listen to me when it comes to sleep and mouth tape? First of all, I am somebody who used to have sleep scores like this. These days, my sleep scores are more like this. And during that process, I went from looking like this to looking like this. I've helped other people during that process and ultimately I'm somebody who's practically gone through the problems that you might be going through. So if that interests you, hang around. In terms of this video, I'm looking to give you an objective view on mouth tape. I am somebody who's used it, but I've also looked into the science and I spoke to doctors, dentists and sleep scientists on this topic, which let's be honest, most productivity influencers haven't actually done. Now to begin, I know what it's like to be tired, inconsistent, unproductive, and generally just not being your best. When your sleep sucks, life kind of sucks, right? And the idea that you can just have a bit of tape, pull it on your mouth, and all your problems will go away, it's very appealing. But does it work? The short answer is no one actually knows for sure. There are very few scientific studies on mouth taping, and the ones that are out there have very low sample sizes, are largely done on patients with sleep apnea, and they show either very minor benefit, no benefit, or possible dangers. So if we're just following the scientific literature, we should be extremely cautious. That said, there are a lot of people who have reported positive results of using mouth tape. For me personally, I have to admit it does seem to work but I think you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Is that placebo or is it real? And are there dangers linked to it? Now, here's a brainwave to share with you. Are we just asking the wrong question here? A lot of people are asking, should we be using mouth tape? But should we really be asking, why are we breathing through our mouths in the first place? Now, you may or may not know this, but mouth breathing is considered not optimal. There's a lot more science behind this and it is, somewhat well accepted that breathing through your mouth is not the best way to breathe. We should be looking to breathe through our noses as much as possible. So why are some of us breathing through our mouths and not our nose? And is taping over the problem really fixing the problem? First of all, we have to look at sleep apnea. Sleep apnea affects over 20% of the population and it's effectively where you are choking during your sleep. You're not getting air while you sleep. If you're having this, then you should certainly not be looking at mouth tape as a first resort. So if you have any symptoms of snoring, choking, not being able to breathe, you have very low quality sleep, before looking at mouth tape, please look at taking the stop band quiz and ideally get checked by your doctor to see if you have sleep apnea. This is very serious and mouth taping is not the answer to your problem. Number two, if you are mouth breathing, maybe look at your diet first. The reality is Western diets have changed a lot in the last few hundred years and people are eating a lot more sugar, a lot more processed foods and foods that generally are causing inflammation in our systems. Inflammation can block our airways, it can mess up with our noses and ultimately lead us to do more mouth breathing. So before I would explore mouth taping, I'd really explore diet first. Number three, do you have a deviated septum or some other issue with your nose? If you are breathing through your mouth, then maybe there is an issue with your nose. Did you get a sporting accident when you were young, for example? I personally had a deviated septum, which meant that basically I was like whistling from my nose all the time. I couldn't properly breathe. No amount of mouth tape is gonna fix your nose. It might be a short term option, but trust me, getting your nose fixed, getting your airways checked will help you way more. I really recommend seeing an ENT specialist, get your nose checked, and maybe there'll be things that you have to do in terms of sprays or operations. If you're interested to learn more about the nose, I'm gonna be doing a LinkedIn Live with Karen Parker, who's an expert and author on nasal breathing. So you can watch the video here. And number four, are you exercising and are you keeping to a good weight? If you are overweight, if you're not exercising, the reality is that also creates more inflammation because your airways are less practiced and it is often gonna to lead to you being more likely to become a mouth breather. We need exercise to live and to function correctly. Therefore, I would also look at this before exploring mouth tape. Is it a fraud? I'm saying probably not, but I'd be extremely cautious and skeptical of those who are selling it. There's a lot of false promises being made about mouth tape based on basically no scientific literature. 
If the science backs us up in a few years time, I'm happy to revert my comment. But for now, the only correct answer is to say it is best advised not to use it. That said, if you do want to try mouth taping, I recommend you do the following. First of all, get surgical micropore tape. It's cheap, it's easy, and it'll save you loads of money instead of going for these sort of big mouth tape brands. Next of all, you do not have to cover your whole mouth. I did it for the thumbnail because it gets clicks. The reality is you just do the side of your mouth. Okay, you can still speak, you can still breathe if you really need to, but it will discourage you from using your mouth while you sleep. And if it works for you, fantastic. But just be mindful of the four points I mentioned. If you're going years and years with big issues with your nose or your sleep apnea, you may be doing yourself more harm than good. If you want to learn more practical steps about sleep, you can sign up to my channel. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok. Much love.